Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Good morning, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Daniel Burton. As you can tell, I am actually not John Thomas. Uh, he has asked me today to do Live at Five, uh, Dream Interpretation. I also, if you, some of you follow us on socials, you may recognize my face from doing Coffee with Friends. Uh, I work here at Streams. Uh, I am also aware of many, many different hats, including uh, Dream Interpreter, which I have been doing outside of being connected to streams for many, many years. So I am going to have some fun. It's a bit of an awkward setup. I haven't really had to talk to camera for a while. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to do my best to work out all the tech, um, including how to do comments properly, um, how to do all those good things. So one of the reasons why I'm on today is John is currently recovering from surgery. I know a lot of you guys who tune in are friends of John, and if you think of him today, uh, please be in prayer for his recovery. Uh, I know that he appreciates that, and he misses doing today. But we are we are here today. So I've said that a few times. You guys, you can tell I'm trying to figure out how to interact with the camera. So this is going to be very real, very uh, raw, very authentic. I've got a few comments here already. Um, having said that, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, hit the little subscribe button. You can also hit the notification button if, for example, Live at Five, all the other things that we do, including Dream Lab, lots of other things on socials is something that you're interested in. And make sure you follow us on socials. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. And we, are, I believe, are also on TikTok. So if you're on any of those platforms, make sure you connect with us there as well. So... I'm going to kick it off. We've got a bunch of new comments here. I'm going to do my best to work through some of this. Um, I do have a bit of a different uh, way of interpreting dreams. I have very much been impacted. There's a few hellos here. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. Uh, wow, there's a lot of dreams and a lot of comments on already. Uh, I've had a bit of a different model. Uh, not model, but I've just had a bit of a different process in dream interpretation. So you may see some differences between me and John, but I have leaned into what we learn here at Streams. It's helped me simplify the process. Um, it's really helped me to focus in on some of the some of the sim most simplest ways of doing dream interpretation, including making sure that my interpretation is as concise and as clear as possible. So with that, I'm going to take a sip of water just so that you guys don't have to deal with my cotton mouth. And we're going to jump in. Now, I'm going to start off reading a dream that we have submitted from our tribe. Um, if you guys are familiar with tribe, um, awesome. Connect with us there. If you're not, you should definitely go on the website and check out our tribe. So I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to get onto your guys' comments. So uh, this is from Judy, and I really hope I don't butcher your last name. Uh, Peralt. And the dream is this, Alaska or a very Arctic place on an intercoastal, strange undiscovered animal stuck on the ice with someone else. We made a hole and rescued it. Then on ice flow, it was melting. I was stuck on open water. I was stuck in open water between the shore. This is an important detail. So I just have underlined this because this is kind of part of the process of me getting into dream interpretation as I begin to underline, underline certain details that I feel something on. And then when I come back to interpret, I'll kind of connect the pieces. Uh, so stuck between the shore, got into a cabin, which was a floating ice fishing thing. It turned out that there was an emaciated small dog inside, which was kind of territorial. And I had to get in or I would drown and befriend him. So he let me. With a group in the waterfront cabin kind, kind of place, kind of floor mat bedroll type of sleeping like a kid's fort almost with others. We rearranged to upstairs. Um, some set up really cool, felt accomplished and how we created a good space. Now, a law enforcement person showed up investigating something. I went out and small talk to him, distracted him from suspicion of our people. It was out of my comfort zone. I was successful. He name dropped some names and people. I know that I had law problems in their past. So it's very important when we approach this dream that we we connect some of the simple things. So in a very cold place, so this is an environment that is not actually conducive to life without the proper preparation. So in a very harsh, extreme place, stuck on an ice shelf between the open water, not quite on land, but in a situation where the water, the ice is beginning to melt. Rescues a creature. Interesting detail. I'm not sure that if you if you take that detail out of the dream, whether the dream would actually change in terms of its flow. Um, 
and then gets into a cabin. So the focus of this dream is very obviously the dreamer. Um, they are in, so this feels like a, what I sense to be in this dream is this feels like the season that they have been in previously where they were in between two things. So they were stuck in a place that was very harsh and very, um, very extreme in nature. And they had learnt the dreamer had learnt in this stuck place to befriend things that were territorial, things that were defensive in order to find a safe place of refuge. And so she found a community in that place. But in order to maintain that place that she had found, it required her to be um, not, I, I'm not going to use the word dishonest, um, but she was distracting. She was running interference for the people so that there would be no consequence. So in my interpretation of this dream, what I feel in this dream is that there are some things that have been defended. There are some things that have been held at length uh, in terms of when they said name dropped in the past, some legal issues in the past. So there are some past issues that the dreamer is running an interference from in a, from a season of transition stuck between the place that they wanted to get to a place of safety and learning to deal with the situation that they found themselves in. So all of that to say the simplest form is this in a hard season previously, you had to make some decisions that caused you to befriend things that you may not have in, a, in another situation. You found a place of refuge in that season, which caused you to run interference for some of the issues that may have been facing the group of people that you found yourself with. So I believe that the Lord would be highlighting this dream as I would think actually initially a prayer strategy to get deeper revelation. Okay, Lord, what is it? Why was I stuck on this shelf? Why, why did I seek refuge in a place? Because obviously in the season that you found yourself in this, in this particular dream that the Lord's highlighting, it was a very extreme place where you had to, it was kind of do or die. You had to make some decisions to survive and the Lord is really, I believe, wanting you to come out of that to some degree. Now, I'm not trying to read too much into the dream, but the simplest part of this is there is a place that seems unhospitable, cold, that you're trying to transition out of. Make sure you don't get stuck with the group that you found yourself with because there is complications with that group. So I hope that that made sense for you, Judy. I'm really trying my best. Uh, with no feedback and interaction and smacking the microphone. So I'm going to come through, have a look at the comments that we have here. Oh, well, a ton of comments have come down. So guys, I really hope that I can get through to some of these dreams. If I don't get any revelation on something, I do apologize in advance. I can't force the, I cannot force the issue. So uh, Amanda Altman asked, um, I would love to send my dream in, but it is a long one. Is there a better place to send it in? I've been... I've long been a fan of Streams Ministries ever since it was Dreams and Mysteries by John Paul. Um, this is going to be the best environment, even if it's a long dream. Please do attempt to send it in. I really hope I can get to it. If not, make sure that you are on the live stream uh, for next month when John is back on at Live at 5 on the third Wednesday of the month. So Graceful Oak Fibers has a dream. I was in a place that was bright white and white, the white life was alive. It was moving. I was terrified. I saw a dark cloud and knew God was in it. And I saw Satan like a ping, like in a ping pong ball machine. And let's see, he was going all over looking for me, but God said no many times. Then I heard God stand up and it was like, he slammed his hand down in anger and said, no, she's mine. Uh, no, she's mine. Then it was quiet and I felt peace. Well, graceful oak fibers, this, uh, this to me is a pretty cut and dry dream. Uh, you were in a place where God was already at. Uh, the enemy definitely came to intimidate. And the Lord is letting you know that even though the enemy has come to try to intimidate you in that place where he is already at, he has you covered and he has you protected. So this is just a really beautiful reminder that the Lord is with you in the midst of it. Um, normally with dark elements in dreams, it's not a hard and fast rule. We don't want to ever get into interpretive legalism. But anytime you see a dark element, there's normally... Um, a demonic issue involved with that so that the Lord was in the dark cloud would not be consistent. But I think the overall message in the dream is that the Lord is letting you know that he has been in the midst. He has had his hand on you and he is with you and will not allow the movings of the enemies to take you out. 
So, Paulina, hello, good afternoon. I was in what appeared to be a cave, but it was actually like a tunnel. It was dark, and I was wearing a wedding dress just standing there look, looking around. So pretty simple, kind of straightforward dream. Interesting imagery. I was alone. So obviously, you're the focus of this dream, Paulina. And I appeared to be in a cave, but it was actually a tunnel. So the difference between it, so we want to contrast those elements. So what's the difference between a tunnel and a cave? Well, a cave has darkness, um, but no way out except for the way that you came in. A tunnel is actually a place of transition to the light, even though the passageway may be dark. And so in the dream, you're standing there looking around. So I believe the Lord is highlighting to you that you're actually in a moment of transition, but it would appear that you feel as if uh, somehow there's no revelation or there is a there is some darkness. Darkness is not even the right word. This doesn't feel like a dark dream. This feels like the Lord letting you know that there is some hiddenness on the season and there's a place of in the tunnel trusting him. And with the symbol of the wedding dress, it's just really clear that the Lord is letting you know, I have covenant with you. I am faithful and I will bring you out of this transition in what appears to be darkness, which was really going to lead you to the light. So Pauline, I hope that that, in, that encourages you and speaks to where you're at. Okay, so Jackie, you've got a three-part, let me just have a look at this, three-part dream, I'm going to do my best with this. So I was in a Burger King parking lot waiting for a parade. A man gave me a control for a conveyor belt. It was moving and I knew that I was going to get engaged. I went through a romantic scene with, uh, next, next slide, with red rose petals and candles. It took me into a big, elegant bathroom where I was met by my ex, Leon. And he said, I got everything set up for you. Before I could get ready, I had to take care of this baby boy in a blue tux. But I could only see from his neck down. His pamper was so wet that I had to change him. And I remember feeling I could get ready if someone would help me with him. I already started walking with him where the wedding would take place. And it was a big arena, thousands, millions of people from all over the world. I remember noticing a group from Africa and I spoke to them, but I don't remember what was said. I felt like an exhortation and okay, Jackie, that's a lot of pieces. So uh, bear with me guys, as I kind of scroll back up a little bit, I want to have a look at some of these. So once again, with this dream, uh, if we remove the dreamer out of the dream, the dream no longer makes sense. There's no, there's no flow to the story. So as simple as I can remember, you're in the Burger King parking lot waiting for a parade. A man gave you control for a conveyor belt. It was moving and I knew I was going to get engaged. Okay, so let's simplify that. Um, I was in a Burger King parking lot. So you're in a place that's temporary. Um, the food where you are at may not necessarily be nutritional, but there is a sense that there is transition, that you were being given a control for a conveyor belt. So this kind of feels like a little bit of a metaphor for that there is a release of grace to you to move forward. And it was moving and I knew I was going to get engaged. So here's that transition. So you go through this romantic scene with red rose petals and candles. Roses can speak often of the presence of the Lord. It took me into a big elegant bathroom where I was met by my ex Leon. And he said, I got everything set up for you. But before I could get ready, I had to take care of this baby boy. Now, bathrooms are normally metaphoric and symbolic of places of spiritual cleansing and deliverance. So there was a place prepared for you for a cleansing. And I believe it's probably connected to this old relationship. Um, but this old relationship had given you something to take in care of that distracted you away from the deliverance that was being made available from you. And it needed changing. So the very thing that I believe that maybe you were to step into through the presence of the Lord uh, was actually being represented, was actually the very thing that this thing, this baby that had been handed to you um, needed, which was change. Um, and you could felt like you could get ready if somebody would help me. So here is this pause here for a second. There's a feeling within the dream. It's not necessarily directly communicated. So We've gone from a pl in a place of rest where there is food available, right? A temporary situation. There is a sense of being handed con control, the ability to move forward, coming into a place of cleansing. But in that place of cleansing, that place of presence was the dreamer's ex. 
that dream is that that ex handed you a baby and that baby needed changing but there was this feeling like i could actually i could actually change this baby i could get this baby ready if somebody was there to help help him so i believe that in the context of the the bathroom the lord is is washing away there is a cleansing coming to that sense of needing help feeling feeling like you can't do the thing that is in your hand um it's highlighting the things that you have in your hand feel like they're too much but i believe that in that you know you are it's another wedding dream which is really interesting um with that the dream it transitions to the wedding would take place in a big arena so it appears to be that there is steps to this transition jackie so from rest to cleansing from that place of cleansing there is which may actually indicate a previous season of cleansing but it actually it actually came with with something for you to steward that actually feels right that that time of cleansing that was historic speaking of a previous season into into now that time of cleansing that was historic it gave you something to steward um but you do need help with what you were given in order to get to that place of the wedding in order to get that place of impact so i believe that there's a message that you carry that's why it said it felt like you had an exhortation at the end but i believe the lord is actually highlighting for you um what is in your hand to steward you need help with there is a there is a cleaning up of what you have not necessarily birthed but you have something that is in its infancy you've been given something from a previous season that's in its infancy that needs cleaning up so that you can get to that place of impact which will be broader in scope sorry it took me a while to kind of get around the pieces there um the streaming platform only lets me read one section at a time which is making the dream interpretation very interesting so robert wants another would love to send a very long detailed dream to you for interpretation uh we because we do have limited capacity at streams we don't actually do dream inter dream interpretation via email roger if you have a long dream my recommendation would be get on this live stream next month i may not get to you at the end uh get on the live stream early because some of these comments came from about 20 minutes before we even started the broadcast so that would be the best way to get that dream interpreted so lee riley in a library with a friend sorry guys let me take a sip of water looking at mu musician's autobiography guy working didn't check us out so i went downstairs i saw this person i was just with in muddy water having sex with a green snake and heard cobra and then the next comment is heard audibly the word cobra hmm. well this dream to me doesn't feel uh instructive it's kind of hard to wrap my head around so in a library with a friend in a place of learning, in a place of equipping, looking at a musician's autobiography. Um, Lee, I don't know if you have anything connected to the music, the music industry, but it almost seems like looking into this particular musician was not going to necessarily produce fruit. Um, it was it, You didn't buy the autobiography, so it didn't cost you anything uh, to check this autobiography out, to use that wordplay. Um, and you went outside of that, that library that place of learning and was just in the muddy and you saw that particular order that particular musician uh engaged uh with a with a snake so i would say that this is potentially a warning dream from the lord um some of the things that maybe you're reading into maybe some of the things that you're reading right now and or learning right now about maybe even from the you know from the world the music industry um is the lord letting you know that they may have something to say but the the condition of their life is not going to produce any fruit so you may have looked into some of these things um it didn't cost you anything which is really really good but to just make sure with clarity that um there's nothing to be necessarily learned from that person's life but there is plenty to be learned from this from this dream so who's who uh i hope that helps lee who's who welcome from bellingham w uh uh washington how you doing uh in real life sleeping in my sister's bedroom so alexa t so i'm gonna throw this up i'm i this is new tech for me i uh i pretend to be very techy but i'm really not so in real life sleeping in my sister's bedroom i dreamt of uh flies 
that word, a gloom, a glut, bad. I'm going to say that they were gathered under a heater on the wall of the bedroom. Heater doesn't exist in real life. Same, but with spiders. So, okay. So you are sleeping in, in a familiar place. So this is really speaking to family issues. Uh, you're, at, you're in a place of rest with your sister. And a heater is something that is supposed to, to control the environment that you're in. It's supposed to change the temperature, set the temperature, if you will. But behind it are things hidden. Uh, you have a bunch of flies, and then the second dream you have spiders. This is really speaking to the enemy's plans, that there are things hidden, even within the family dynamic, even within places that you find rest, that the Lord is wanting to highlight. The heater, I mean, heat, heat's not fire. Heat is a source of heat. Fire would normally be emblematic of the Holy Spirit, of the activity of the Spirit. But definitely in this case, this dream feels like it is indicating that there are some hidden issues within the family, even though you're comfortable with them, that the Lord is highlighting behind the heater. The heater doesn't exist in real life. That's a really interesting piece. Well, heater would be emblematic of, of really would be symbolic of warmth. So in the, in the kind of the, the, the metaphor of the dream, something that produces warmth and safety still is hiding issues that need to be dealt with. So Alexa T, I believe the Lord is inviting you to pray into what are some of the issues hiding in comfortable, familiar places where I have found rest within, within my family dynamic, uh, within maybe even within some of your family history, some of your history within your family. So I hope that I hope that brings clarity. Um, I'm not sure if you're on. I uh, haven't got down to the bottom of the comments yet. Maybe I should actually do that. Whole bunch of hellos. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to just scroll down a bit further and see if anyone's responded. Okay. Okay, I think we... Oh, man, I scrolled down too far. So I think Alexa T put that dream up a couple of times. Okay. So Alexa, I hope that helps. Okay. So SRT07, I hope I'm reading that right. Dreamt my ex threw me a surprise B-Day party in my new home. Both families were there, sang with me happy birthday, three-tiered white, white cake with three tall white candles, huge silver wrapped gifts on long dining tables stacked in threes. Wow, that is a bunch of threes. I'm just trying to visualize a dream. Dreamt that my ex threw me a surprise B-Day party in my new home. Both families there saying happy birthday. I'm not getting anything clear off that uh, SRT07. If you have some, maybe just let me know how the dream felt. We can maybe hopefully circle back to that. That one to me is 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 not super clear. Navigating life with God. Hello from Germany. How you doing? Okay. What is the dream elements for kisses? This is ERBY125. Had a dream where good aunt I haven't seen in years greeted me with a hug and kisses on the face. Well, that's kind of a nice dream. When I think about biblical kisses, you know, we think about greet one another with a holy kiss. We think about kiss being very, very close proximity. And whilst normally we would say that the mother can represent either the church or the Holy Spirit, this kiss to me seems to be a, a if you will, a contact of intimacy and a greeting. Hmm. Aunt, a good aunt that I haven't seen in years. So, Lord, what is that? So, I believe that the dream is is really kind of pointing to things from a previous season coming into the new, but with intimacy and 
hospitality, with an openness, with a welcomeness. So I believe there may be some things from previous seasons um, that are about to come into your now season that are going to be both into both up close intimate but also that are going to be welcoming it's going to be it's rather than trepidation with how is these old relationships or these old things going to come into the new it's going to come in real close and come in with friendliness that would be how i would see that particular dream kathy black hi lasagna hey patty patty hi how you doing okay Catherine, let's have a shot at what you are going. So Catherine Rojas Osborne, I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Dream, grandma and I put my aunt in the car, both are deceased. Then grandma starts driving, but I say we didn't finish closing the door. And I keep telling grand to go back and then she goes down a street. Well, normally when we see uh, deceased relatives in dreams, it is speaking of of generational things. Um, the grandma is driving. So there's a momentum that came from grandma that affected both your aunt and you that has a momentum attached to it. Um, and the door on it isn't closed. Hmm. I'm trying not to read too much into the simplicity of this. Because there is no uh, communication of emotion, whether good or bad, I don't know whether the grandma or the aunt are believers. Um, this is kind of a bit of a tricky one for me to actually tackle. All I would say is if grandma and aunt were both believers, uh, this could be indicating, because I haven't got clear revelation on this, so I'm trying not to touch principles. Catherine, I would need more info, particularly on this one. I would pray into this one. Uh, I would pray into this two ways. If you come from godly inheritance, what is the door that needs to, you know, this movement, this, if you will, what has been handed down to you has the capacity, it's opened. So what is it that needs to be sealed up to move for, to continue moving forward in a safe manner? If that is a godly inheritance. It's a good thing. So how do we shore up what I've received from my, from my grandmother and from my aunt? If they are not believers, it would be the Lord maybe indicating to you that there is an open door coming through the generations that needs to be sealed up. That's causing you, it's carrying you with a momentum that you're not authoring, um, but the Lord wants to address. Yeah, I hope that's helpful. Like I said, if I don't get a clear revelation on it, there are some there are some principles on how to move forward with some of these. Because if there's not a clear emotion, if there's not a clear message in the dream, sometimes this can be our souls just really, you know, this could be a flushing dream. But this seems to be really a dream indicating generational. Either it it feels more generational, perhaps issues that the Lord is wanting to highlight because of the open door. It doesn't seem like this is a good door. Um, you were crying out wanting that door to be closed. So I would say the Lord is is highlighting a door that is causing a momentum in your life um, that has come down through the generations. Uh, okay. Alexa T, yes, we definitely touched that dream. Jacqueline Smith, there's not a lot, Jacqueline, to go on with that dream. Uh, let me just show you guys. So I dreamt that I was standing in the air surrounded by birds of all colors and varying sizes. So this, this one, I would need more info on this. Just, there's not a lot here to go on. So when you guys are approaching dreams, approaching, interpreting dreams, sometimes, sometimes a simple dream actually has a really clear revelation. Standing in the air would indicate spiritual activity, a higher, pre, uh, higher perspective, so this dream, Jacqueline, could be really just revealing to you that you have come into a higher perspective. You're currently in a higher perspective because there was no movement. So I have to be careful not to infer what's not there. And you're going to begin to observe. So birds of all colors and different sizes, I can't tell whether they're negative or positive, but there is a vantage point that you have that is higher up that the Lord is highlighting that you're going to see things clearly around you um, and in full color. That would be the interpretation of that dream. Okay, Aratai Tucker, in a cave, three people in white sitting in back, 
Crevice in front of them, areas of black lava, people searching for gold. I'm observing. Ground lava turns into white pebbles, me collecting gold inlay pebbles in white linen. Shirt with gold dusting on fingers and on shirt. Gold increase in abundance and size with each location. Gold stones, nuggets, then boulders. Was given a shovel. Hmm. Have us a sneaking suspicion that you're an intercessor. Just by the, the level of detail that is in the dreams. So, in a cave. So, once again, like we talked about, you know, you're observing. So, you go from observer to participator. So, in a cave. So, it's something that you have to come back out the way that you came in. In white. So, this is all good. Uh, you saw three people in white sitting in the back. You're observing. The ground turns into white balls. So there are three people in the back observing this cave. You begin to grab white pebbles, collect gold inlay pebbles and white linen, and was given a shovel. Yeah, this would really, this is a really interesting dream. The visuals are, are quite intriguing. So you go from observation to participation really quick in this dream. So you're observing the cave and then all of a sudden you are collecting you are collecting pebbles that the ground black lava so black to white pebbles that kind of speaks a little bit of of redemption you know uh, black lava not being a positive thing being a negative thing it turned into something in this cave in this hidden season that you found yourself in turned into something that you could actually gather, that you could actually collect. It was something that was in front of you to take a hold of, covered in righteousness, covered in white, covered in gold, gold being glory, gold being the, the glory, gold being the Lord. And then you were given a shovel. So I would, I would say to you that this dream is really indicating that in this place of hiddenness that you find yourself in, this current moment that you find yourself in, there may doesn't say that it's dark, but in this this particular season, this moment you find yourself in, there are things for you to collect and gather and observe that are actually going to cause you to be able to dig deeper, even further. When I think about white stone, you know, I think of a new name given to me by that was known only by the Lord. Uh, white pebbles. I'm going to kind of go out on a, on a little bit of a limb here with this. These, this seems to be that the Lord has given you the capacity to, to gather these white pebbles, to gather these identities, to gather these things that are white stone with glory, things that he has purposed for people. And in this hidden place of intercession, this hidden place, you're gathering these stones. And while the dream doesn't say that you're going to distribute them, um, there's a place of you digging deeper in this season to actually carry and pick up more of what you're observing in this season so this feels like a really good dream it feels it feels like you are in this right moment right now learning how to steward what's in front of you but also the lord giving you the ability to dig deeper and carry even more that would be the that would be how i would see that particular dream okay christina ashton dreamt of a man with darkness Around him gave me a gift of a gray white snake. I took a deck of cards in my hand and chopped its head off, but it had a sil but it still had silver attached, so its head was still there. Well, I would tell you that this is a dark dream. Christina, so what do we do with dark dreams? As a general principle, we flip them. So there is somebody or something in this season that is wanting to now snake would really speak of uh demonic activity, uh curses. Um the deck of cards in your hands uh, really doesn't speak to a positive thing. So we're going to flip this in the moment you find yourself in the enemy is going to try to hit you with maybe, maybe with some activity, maybe with some, uh, with some warfare, but to let you know, the Lord is showing you that he intends to actually change this outcome. So pray the opposite that you would come into a place of blessings from the hand of the Lord and that the works of the enemy that he's trying to put over you in this season would be reversed and, not received. Emmanuel, hello. Okay, Whitney Jackson. Let me see. Okay. Pastor gives me an award. Someone pours a cup in front of me of three colors spill out baby blue, white, and dark blue. The baby blue meant global, white meant spirit, dark blue for pastor.
Hmm. Whitney, Lord, what's on that? Is there anything on that? Yeah, Whitney, this is one of those ones where, well, the simplest form of this, whenever we see a pastor, we really think of the shepherd. So the Lord is, is giving you an award. So there is something that has been gifted to you in this season. The pouring out of a cup in front of you. So baby blue, white, and dark. I wouldn't necessarily go with the global spirit and pastor. Blue, blue can really connect to revelation. White can really mean purity. Dark blue. Yeah, so there is there's purity, there's revelation being poured out to you in this season. Uh, this dream would be one of those things. But the Lord is giving you a gift. An award is like a gift. It's a reward for, for having achieved something. So there is something where there's there's a recognition of you having passed a test or achieved something in the season, but also to expect further things to be poured out in clarity. Okay, Sarah, I dreamt I was in a courtyard and there was a clear veil. The veil had three earrings pinned into it from small to big. I was allowed to put the small earrings on. Then I was allowed to go behind the veil. Hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to look off camera. I'm not used to staring down the barrel of a camera while I'm while I'm thinking. Courtyard. So the courtyard is an outside place. It's normally attached to a bigger building. It's exposed to the elements. So I'm outside in a courtyard and there is a veil. So there's a clear veil. So you're in an outside place exposed to the elements. There's a clear veil that you can see through in order to pierce the veil. I think that is the word play here. Earrings are to do with piercings. So to pierce the veil is really the season that you're in. So I think about, for some reason, my mind goes to a bond servant. A bond servant was in the time of Jesus was actually one that voluntarily entered into the service service of a master's house, and as an official seal of their bond servanthood, they actually put their ear on the lintel of the door and they pierced their ear against the door as a seal of their servanthood. And I believe that the Lord is is really highlighting this deeper consecration this piercing, this bond servant marking of your life in order to come through the veil. I believe the veil, even though transparent, is there's still some things that you haven't been able to see clearly because of this veiling that's been in front of you in this in this season, in this moment where you're where you feel like you're exposed or you know you're outside, you're in the sunshine. Doesn't necessarily say that, so I don't want to include that in there. But you're in this exposed place where there is a highlighted veil. In order to come through, in order for the veil to be pierced, you actually need to receive that piercing in order to move through. So I believe, Sarah, there's a deeper invitation for you to come through into that bond servanthood to allow the Lord to pierce you with the things that pierce that pierce him in order to lift the veil. Christina Ashton dreamt I was babysitting two little girls. They tore the house apart. Got honey all over the over the money I was trying to pick up. I was also drinking beer. Well, um, that is a interesting combination. Babysitting. So immediately as I'm looking at this dream, obviously the dream's about you, Christina. So there is in the season that you're in, you're responsible. You're responsible for two little girls. Um, so there are these things that you're responsible for. I don't know if there are two things in this season and they are messy and got honey all over the money. So honey can speak of, honey can speak of sweetness. Honey can speak of, I mean, it's positive or negative. Uh, money obviously is provision. Revelation can be honey from the honeycomb. All over the money, and I was trying. I was trying to pick up. Also drinking a beer. So, in the midst of the things that you are temporarily responsible for, uh, they're they're creating mess um, with provision. I think is kind of the word picture that is here. 
Um, make sure that, you know, you're also drinking a beer. So you're trying to cope with the situation. So maybe there's something in this dream uh, for you, Christina, where the Lord is highlighting that this season will only be temporary. Um, it's a little messy, a little chaotic. You're only going to be temporarily responsible for the things that are kind of connected to provision for you because you're babysitting. So babysitting can be financial. Um, but the drinking the beer thing, maybe there's just a, a, a prayer strategy into that. Maybe ask the Lord what that, that beer thing is. I don't know if it's necessarily um, beer in and of itself, but maybe it is something that in the midst of this kind of chaotic situation that you are trying to use or maybe has come alongside the situation you're trying to steward that may not be beneficial. It's an interesting element. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go here or there. Yeah, I hope that's a, that's a, some help for you, Christina. But there's definitely in this in in the moment in this dream in in this season in this moment in time, it feels chaotic. There are things that you're responsible for. It's only going to be temporary. It's messy. Um, it's definitely connected to to provision. Uh, but I also believe that to encourage you, hey, this is this this will only last for a for a season. Okay, Whitney Jackson. I'm so sorry, guys, that I'm not. You guys are on here crushing through these dream requests and i'm trying my best to get through a few of them for you watching me on tv pastor gives me an award okay no we have watching me on tv okay that detail whitney i think i already okay watching me on tv pastor gives me an award so you're on tv so you're highlighted okay so this is just an extra piece tv um tv is something that's broadcast tv is a message um, so as a theater, so as a movie theater, this is a, this is something that's been communicated. It's that particularly potentially is prophetic in nature. Um, so I think this is just a prophetic encouragement for you, Whitney, just to circle back. Um, what does a movie theater or a thefts? So I hope that helps Alexa T. We already got to that one on YouTube. Uh, so question, what does a movie theater or a thrift store mean in a dream? Well, once again, big smash King, uh, it really depends on the context of the dream. So a movie theater, like I just hinted before, can mean a vision, can mean a prophetic message or a prophetic vision, depending on the positive or the negative. So the overall context, if it's the setting, if the if the dream is set in a in a movie theater, that would be probably the context of a of a dream or a vision. Um, yeah, and a thrift store. Once again, context is going to be everything, but. We think of clothes as coverings, um, thrift store can, yeah, it's going to depend on context. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Andrea Little Weaver, riding on a horse, holding on to someone. There is a king on a horse. All men army on horses have red robes. A man on a horse looks at me, has black hair, red robe, poking, that's no, a bit, eats people trying to climb on all horses. It's a bit hard to ascertain uh, some of those words, poking, trying to climb on horses, pushing them off. Okay. I'm going to give it a shot just based on riding on a horse. A horse can mean strength. Um, I'm not going to go and lean into this because those pieces make it hard. I'm not really getting a lot of revelation on this one in particular, Andrea. So maybe hopefully I can scroll down and see if it's, clarified in the comments a bit further down okay okay just gonna kind of have a roll through uh sr i think i had a shot at that one okay okay frida martin Oh, Fredia, I do apologize for my pronunciation, guys. Um, I hope that I didn't just butcher that. I saw a very shiny white and gold electric guitar standing in front of me, and it was mine. It was connected to an amp. I don't play instruments in real life. Hmm. Well, in the simplest, you know, white and gold, you know, white would be purity, gold would be would be glory, would be deity um there is a sound that you are given are being given that is amplified um 
if you don't play an instrument in real life, so would the, this dream would be there's a sound given to you that will be amplified that will not be your natural skill in real life. So watch what the Lord does with that because he wants to give you a sound that will be amplified, will be he will actually bring amplification to, um, that will resonate when it is heard. A little... Frida, watch for what the Lord's given you. Um, don't look for what you can do in the natural. Look for what he enables you to do past the natural would be the interpretation of that dream. I hope that is helpful. Okay, I'm going to pull one off Facebook. I just want to try to give a a a uh, fair spread between our all of our viewers today. Okay, Kathy Black. I'm just going to roll down the bottom to see if there's any feedback from previous dreams. Okay, Jackie, that's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, good. I'm glad that there's I'm glad that there's some help being offered into the dreams. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of uh, reposts going on, so I'm going to have to do my best to scroll through to get back to this original dream. So, Kathy Black. Okay, wow, there's a lot of comments. Sorry, guys, I'm just, once I said, technology is not my thing. So, I dreamt I was at BFF Amanda's deceased in real life house, which sat in the place of UA dorms. Not sure where that is. I said, I need my accounting notes. I had stored them there and I had a feeling it wasn't there. I wondered if it was at my mom's house. I was upset it might be missing. Next scene in a church in hometown. Doug and Flora were looking for their accounting notes too. We scanned the church for them while we were standing together in a pew, but knew that they were stolen. I thought about all of those years of accounting notes. Because I don't know who Doug and Flora are. So guys, when you submit dreams, just a real uh, helpful key is I... These people are familiar to you in life, um, and when you name a name, it means something to you. For me, as a someone who's doing the interpretation of the dreams, um, I can't connect dots that aren't clearly spelt out. So, Kathy, I, I want to kind of help out with this, but there's a couple of pieces here that I would need kind of greater clarification on. So, um, I'm not going to be able to get to your dream this time around, so please be on next month, John. Resubmit this. Let us know who Doug and Flora are. It's kind of helpful. Um, just so there's some clarity for the pieces, the dream elements, it does help when, you know, we get revelation on dreams, all interpretations belong to the Lord. Um, but when we're learning skills on, on metaphor, um, those dreams are super, those elements of those dreams are super important. So I hope that helps. Don't mean to be difficult on that one, but would need more information. Okay. Sarah, Whitney. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep rolling through guys. I'm going to probably maybe just do one or two. I do apologize for those of you, those of you who have submitted, uh, dreams. I'm seeing a lot of repeats. So I'm going to kind of scroll, scroll about halfway there, down and see if I can get a fresh dream. Um, okay. All right, I'm just trying to find something that's a little more. Okay. Okay, we've got multiple posts. Alexa T, thanks. Going to meditate on that. Awesome, Alexa. Thank you so much. I know this is really boring as I'm scrolling through comments, but there's a lot of um repeat comments up on the platform so i'm trying to i am trying to uh find something that i can actually tackle um it's not a repeat so i'm going to just try and find one more guys okay so please uh it's super helpful i know you guys want to have your dreams interpreted um it's kind of a bit difficult when they get reposted the same dream six or seven times um, I'm trying to find my way through here a little bit. Uh, 
I've got a lot of repeats here, guys. Um, oh, that's fun. Okay. Well, guys, because I've got a lot of repeats and partials, there's not a lot going on that I can kind of find any clarity on. So I'm going to end this live stream here today. Um, thank you for for being on here. Thank you for engaging. Um, thank you for posting comments. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and not go down the rabbit hole um, of elements, uh, you know, in terms of, once again, dream elements are normally subject to the overall dream. Thank you for being with me on my, uh, my very first uh hopefully not my last uh, live dream amateur live at five with you guys. Uh, once again, be following us on, uh, we've got new dream lab content coming out. Um, we do our best to try to engage with the comments on the platform. If you guys are watching this on the replay, unfortunately we won't be able to interpret your dreams submitted. Um, did my best to try to get to the dreams that have been posted. Um, uh, and as you remember, please pray for John uh, as he is recovering from surgery, but that's all for me today. Uh, Hope you've been blessed. Hope this has been helpful. I hope I haven't uh, rambled on too much as I'm trying to navigate this platform. And I hope there's some stuff for you guys to learn here. So as always, uh, be blessed and we'll see you guys soon.